Hello, Suburban viewers. Chelsea St. Pierre, reporter for the Suburban newspaper. I'm here today with Heidi Yetman, president of the Quebec Provincial Association of Teachers. Heidi, thank you for meeting with us today. Um, so the teachers uh, unions received a mandate to strike uh, as the negotiations with the government reached an impasse. Um, and there was an 87% of 10 unions who voted yes to the strike. Um, can you explain to me uh, why we've reached an impasse? Well, uh, we've been negotiating for over a year now. It's really important to realize that our contract ended in March of 2020. And on March the 13th, everything shut down and the government said, um, we're going to put negotiations on hold. And we were quite happy about that. And two days later, Premier Legault pulled all the unions back in and said, we need to negotiate now. I want industrial peace. So we've been negotiating for an entire year and there is no movement at the table. Um, the union have put their heels in, the government has put their heels in. So in order to get negotiations moving, uh, we decided to get a strike mandate, to put some pressure on the government. Okay, and so the uh, the, the demands that uh, are being requested are, uh, if I can just go through each one of them and maybe you can explain to us uh, more or less uh, in, in, in some detail what, what they mean. Um, so to reduce, uh, the first one I have is to reduce the class sizes. What's, how would it help to reduce class sizes and what's the purpose for that? Well, one of the things that we're asking is we're, we're actually asking to focus in on classes with students that have a lot of um, uh, individual education plans. And those plans, there seems to be more and more students with those plans in place. We have classes with up to 40% of the students in that class with a personal plan. So what we're asking for is that if there's a class with a lot of those IEPs, we call them, that we reduce that class. And that gives more attention to each student and allows the teacher some room to, to be able to help their students, especially those that have difficulties. Okay, and uh, more resources for special needs at risk and vulnerable students. Um, what type of resources? Well, there's a whole bunch of possibilities here, and uh, there are budgetary rules that have um, funds in them that school boards use to help special needs, and we're asking to add to those resources. Those resources have not changed in the last, I would say, 10 or 15 years, and it's time to, uh, to bring them up to date because we have more special needs and students at risk in the classrooms. So it's really important that the funds uh, come up with the number of students that are that are in the classroom that need help. And to increase in full time permanent posts, um, rather than uh, using a priority poll list, what is a priority poll list and uh, how so can right, we drive so right, full time yeah. posts for that? So right now there are a lot of teachers that are given contracts and they're on a priority pool. It's a pool of teachers that are listed in terms of priority. So in other words, somebody who's been around longer will be at the top of the list and they'll get to choose a job first. And people that have not been around very long, they'll get you know what's left, left over at the end type of thing. Uh, but we have people that have been on a priority pool for, for many, many years, and we kind of question that. We're in a period in Quebec where we have a shortage of, shortage of teachers, and we don't understand why we're not giving out permanent contracts. And that's also not only in the youth sector, in, in primary and secondary, but we're also talking about vocational training teachers and adult education teachers. We should have more permanent positions for, for stability and to encourage teachers to remain in the, um, in the profession. And uh, you're also asking for a reduction of teaching time in elementary schools. Can you clarify what that means and what, that would, what purpose that would serve also? Well, I think that one of the reasons we're targeting elementary is because elementary teachers have more hours of teaching than any other sector. 
So to reduce their teaching time by an hour per week, which is not very much, but it would be amazing for those teachers. It would give them an extra hour to do evaluation, preparation, call, call parents. Right now, they, they have very little time in the day to do that. So that's what we're asking. We're asking for one hour reduction of their teaching uh, task uh, during the week. Okay, and uh, uh, teachers want more autonomy in their workload. What does that mean, autonomy in their workload? I mean, is that to choose the curriculum? Is that uh, uh, to- Yeah, no, autonomy means that they choose what they have to do during the day. This is a little bit more complex. It's something that came uh, to our uh, collective agreement in 2010, I believe. And um, right now we have in our workload, uh, just to kind of bring it down to simple, teachers have to be in the building for 32 hours. That doesn't mean, however, that they're, they're only working for 32 hours. As you know, teachers bring a lot of stuff home and sometimes they stay after school for for a couple more hours. So I would say teachers on average probably work 40 to 50 hours a week, but they have to be in the building for 32 hours. And on those 32 hours, they have five hours that they can use as they wish. In other words, the administration doesn't tell them what to do. They have five hours per week where they're in the building and they can work on things they need to get done. Um, right now on the table, the government is asking to remove those five hours of, it's called work of a personal nature, and to have it entirely assigned. So there are 32 hours in the school would be assigned by the administration. Uh, it depends on what, you know, where you are. There are some administrators out there that completely give autonomy to their teachers, allow them to do the work that they need. Uh, and then there's other administrators who like to um, organize teachers' lives and tell them exactly where they should be and what they should be doing at every moment. So to lose this five hours is a big deal. Uh, and we, uh, we, want, we would actually like to see that actually brought up to six hours um, uh, so that our workload will have more autonomy, will have more, uh, we can make decisions on what we need to get done during the day. Um, I just want to touch on one more point. I mean, even with five or six hours, the teachers are doing a lot of additional work for, you know, 10 up to 25 hours from home, correct? Yes, absolutely. Um, so, but they're paid for the 32 hours that they're in the building, or is it part of their That's workload? That's not really true. I mean, that is something that uh, is, uh, is, teachers will say that we're paid for 32 hours in the building. But in reality, um, we are looked at as 40 hour a week uh, workers. And it's something that happened um, in about 2000, the government was saying we were part time. And uh, we all kind of went, whoa, um, I work <laughs> a lot of hours during the week. I'm definitely not part time. So we calculated and on average teachers work about 41 hours a week. That was in 20, uh, that was in the year 2000. I would say that has gone up quite significantly, especially during the pandemic. Uh, so we have to be in the building for 32 hours. That's in our collective agreement, but it is understood, it's understood that uh, we have to get our job done. So um, a teacher will make sure that their lessons are prepared for the next day, and they'll most likely do that at home or after school or you know going in earlier or something like that. So we're paid as full-time 40 hour per week workers. And uh, okay, so now we're gonna get to the last point, which is higher salaries. Salary, uh, starting yes. point, yeah. <laughs> the starting point uh, for teachers in Quebec is at 46,000. Um, how does that compare to the rest of Canada? It is the lowest. So we are starting our careers off at the lowest uh, amount across Canada. And then it go, it takes us 15 years to get to the top of our salary, which takes a long time. Uh, in, in other provinces, you're looking at eight, nine or 10 years to get to the top of your salary. And in other provinces, if you have a master's or a PhD, you can even go above that. Here uh, in Quebec, uh, we don't have that system. It's 15 years to get to the top of your salary. So therefore in our career, uh, we are the lowest paid uh, in Canada. 
and uh, it's capped at 82,000, is that correct? At this moment it is, it's about 82,000. Um, and uh, if you compare our top salary, we're probably in the, 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 the bottom three uh, in Canada. But the problem, again, I'm gonna repeat myself, but the problem is it's because it takes almost half our career to get to that. So even in a province, for example, I think New Brunswick might be about the same amount as us at the top salary. It only takes them nine years to get there. Whereas us, it takes us 15 years to get there. So that is why we're considered the lowest paid in Canada over our career. If you so, take all of the years that you work. So the union is asking for a realistic rising scale um, uh, but for the immediate, I mean, they're looking to have an 11% increase over three years with an immediate 5% increase. Uh, yeah, so uh, it, it's, it's, this is very unusual. Usually uh, there are two tables that where we negotiate. The first table is um, with the public sector workers under the Centrale Syndicale du Québec, the CSQ. And public sector workers under the CSQ are asking for 6% over three years. And that's usually what we do every time we negotiate. It's, it's usually over five years. This time it's over three years. Um, and we're looking for 2% for the next, you know, uh, including 20, uh, 2020 that just passed for the next three years. Um, but we also have another negotiating table, which is called our sectorial table, where we, we discuss our collective agreement as teachers, and it is working conditions. And this is the first time ever that we've asked at our um, working conditions table, and not with the public sector, for a 5% salary adjustment, so that we can obtain the average of the Canadian uh, salary. Another thing that we're asking is to, to remove six of those, um, those steps so that we can get down to um, you know, nine steps instead of the 15 steps that we have to get to the top of our salary. Which by the way, the CAC government had promised. They had promised to get rid of the first six steps in the teacher's salary. And yet uh, that's not on the negotiating table. Um, and as the schools reopened in September, the teachers uh, by default became the uh, frontline workers of the second wave. Um, what, what were they offered in terms of uh, support, uh, compensation for that? Uh, I mean, has the government uh, put a hand in there to help out or? Uh, the, you know, I, I have to say we put out a survey uh, mid-September to see how our teachers were doing with the new measure, to, uh, the, uh, the sanitary rules, and, and they're overwhelmed, they're stressed, they're tired, um, they're finding this very difficult, and I would say that teachers across Canada are finding it different difficult. Um, I'm on the board of directors for the Canadian Teachers Federation, so I speak to union leaders ac across the country, and all teachers across this country are having uh, quite the time of it uh, with this COVID. It's important to note that before COVID, that, that the conditions have gotten worse over the years. In terms of salary too, we've never kept up with inflation, so our purchasing power is diminished. But the number of students with special needs and vulnerable students have increased in our classrooms. Well, you mentioned oh, for um, a whole bunch of reasons, but uh, right. and so even before the pandemic hit, we were in a bad place, and we were really excited about this round of negotiations because I don't know if you remember, but in October, the uh, CAC government was in a budgetary surplus. We had, I'm, I know, we had people behind us. We had the public behind us. Uh, we had parents behind us, and then the pandemic hit. And uh, of course, the healthcare workers are frontline workers. And oh my gosh, I just read an article yesterday about them, and I just feel for them. And the work that they do is so so important. And the focus kind of went from from the teachers to the healthcare workers, and uh, we haven't really uh, been heard by the government. And I think that's really sad because teachers are trying to get their voices heard. And it's been a struggle since the get go, since March the 15th, when everything closed down, uh, unions have been advocating for stronger, stricter sanitary measures in schools. 
and uh, the government is just not listening. Heidi, thank you for uh, meeting with us today and touching on those points. 